Hello everyone. In the first part of atherosclerosis, we have studied the major events in the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. In this second part, we will study about various risk factors and management modalities of atherosclerosis. What is risk factor? It is something that increases a person's chances of developing a disease. Risk factors for atherosclerosis are of two types. Non-modifiable risk factors means they cannot be changed and modifiable risk factors means you can take measures to change them. The non-modifiable risk factors are age. As age advances, the elasticity of the vessel wall decreases and formation of plaque progresses. Second non-modifiable risk factor is gender. Males are affected more than females, maybe due to estrogen in females. Third is genetic factor. Family history is most important independent risk factor for atherosclerosis. Certain disorders are strongly associated with atherosclerosis, for example, familial hypercholesterolemia. Now let's enumerate modifiable risk factors. The first important is hyperlipidemia and more specifically hypercholesterolemia. It is the major risk factor for development of atherosclerosis and it is sufficient to induce lesions in absence of any other risk factors. So increased cholesterol level, increased LDL. So all these are risk factors for atherosclerosis. Then decreased HDL. HDL is involved in the reverse cholesterol transport. So if the level of HDL is decreased and it is dysfunctional, then it is most important risk factor for atherosclerosis. Hypertension. It acts probably by a mechanical injury of the arterial wall due to increased blood pressure. And if systolic blood pressure is more than 160 millimeters of mercury, it is a major risk factor for stroke and coronary artery disease. Roughly an increase by 10 millimeters of mercury reduces life expectancy by 10 years. Fourth is diabetes mellitus, lipoprotein little a, cigarette smoking, increased homocysteine, obesity, high sensitive C-reactive protein, stress. Stress releases catecholamines which mobilize free fatty acids from adipose tissue and increase the synthesis of VLDL. So stress, high intake of saturated fats, lack of exercise, all these are minor risk factors. Decreased HDL cholesterol is important risk factor for atherosclerosis. HDL cholesterol concentration should be more than 40 mg per deciliter, but more than the concentration, activity is more important. HDL cholesterol is anti-atherogenic. During the process of atherosclerosis, LDL is oxidized to form oxidized LDL, which is taken up by the macrophages to form foam cells. Accumulation of foam cells in subendothelial region leads to formation of fatty stick, which is later converted to atheroma. What is the function of HDL? It prevents the conversion of LDL to oxidized LDL. Second important function is prevention of adhesion of monocytes to the endothelium. And third important function is prolongation of half-life of prostacycline, which is released by endothelial cell and promotion of vasodilatory effect. So by these three mechanisms, HDL cholesterol is antiatherogenic. How diabetes mellitus is associated with atherosclerosis? Diabetes is characterized by hyperglycemia. So glucose concentration is increased and it leads to non-enzymatic glycation. And that's why there is increased glycated LDL. LDL is oxidized by reactive oxygen species to form oxidized LDL. So both glycated LDL and oxidized LDL are, are increased. There is increased production of small dense LDL which are small in size and this small dense LDL they have decreased affinity to LDL receptors so they, are, they cannot be catabolized. There is increased endothelial barrier permeability so they can easily pass through the barrier and accumulate in the intima. So there is more retention by the subendothelial matrix and they are more susceptible for oxidation. And HDL concentration is also decreased in diabetes. So together, glycated LDL increase, oxidized LDL increase, increase in small dense LDL and decrease in HDL. So all these factors leads to formation of atheroma. 
what is lipoprotein little a it is similar to the ldl particle so this is ldl particle which is, which is attached to apo b molecule apo b 100 in the lipoprotein little a additional apo a apo little a molecule is attached to the apo b 100 by disulfide linkage and this molecule now is called as lipoprotein little a and this lipoprotein little a is different from the apo a it is very strongly associated with myocardial infarction and that's why it is referred as little rascal in 40% of population no detectable levels of lipoprotein a are seen in the serum but in 20% of population it is more than 30 mg per deciliter and presence of lipoprotein little a makes the younger generation more susceptible for heart attack so the heart attacks which occur between 30 to 40 years of age it is seen that there is increased lipoprotein little a level in their serum indians have a higher level of lipoprotein little a than western population and nicotinic acid reduce serum lipoprotein a level and this lipoprotein little a inhibits fibrinolysis fibrinolysis is important mechanism and it prevents the thrombus formation and thus it prevents the atherosclerosis and lipoprotein little a acts by inhibiting this fibrinolysis normally what happens whenever there is intravascular thrombosis the plasminogen it is activated to plasmin and this plasmin then binds to the fibrin and it causes fibrinolysis this is normally happens and this lipoprotein little a it has a homology with plasminogen so this lipoprotein little a binds to the fibrin and it inhibits plasminogen activation so instead of plasmin in this condition when there is lipoprotein little a plasminogen is not activated to plasmin instead lipoprotein little a binds to the fibrin and it inhibits plasminogen activation but when this lipoprotein little a is bound to the fibrin the fibrin is not lysed so it opposes the action of intravascular thrombosis and possible myocardial infarction so whenever there is increased lipoprotein little a there is no fibrinolysis and it leads to increased intravascular thrombosis which can further lead to myocardial infarction now let's see how cigarette smoking is associated with atherosclerosis the risk is dose dependent it depends on number of cigarettes smoked per day cigarette smoking enhances oxidation of ldl reduces hdl increases c reactive protein and augments aggregation and adhesion of platelets thus it accelerate the rate of atherosclerosis nicotine of cigarette cause lipolysis and it leads to increase acetyl coa concentration and that further leads to increase cholesterol synthesis so it increases cholesterol level in the blood that is hypercholesterolemia which is again the independent risk factor for atherosclerosis nicotine also causes transient constriction of coronary and carotid arteries this is how cigarette smoking is associated with atherosclerosis c reactive protein is acute phase reactant synthesized by liver and it is increased in the inflammatory condition atherosclerosis is also a chronic inflammatory condition high sensitivity c reactive protein means very low concentration of crp is detected by this method and half of the heart attacks and stroke happen in patients who do not have high levels of cholesterol in their blood so the estimation of hscrp may help to identify patients who are at risk and may need medical treatment it is the predictor for future mi within the next 12 months if the concentration is less than 1 mg per liter it shows low risk if it is between 1 to 3 mg per liter it shows borderline risk if it is more than 3 mg per liter there is high risk for future myocardial infarction and there is need of active medical intervention but the concentration is more than 10 mg per liter it is a significant acute phase reaction and it is not indicative of any cardiac pathology crp binds selectively to ldl activates complement resulting in plaque formation CRP also inhibits endothelial nitric oxide synthase which causes endothelial dysfunction. Hyperhomocysteinemia is seen to be associated with the atherosclerosis. It interacts with lysyl residues of collagen, interferes with collagen crosslinking and bind to fibrillin. 
which further produces endothelial dysfunction. The homocysteine forms homocysteine thiolactone, which is highly reactive free radical, which thiolates LDL particle. And aggregation of LDL particles, which are endocytes by macrophages to form foam cells. So there is increased tendency of atherogenesis. How obesity is associated with atherosclerosis? It causes insulin resistance, alteration in lipids, blood pressure and coagulation and it also causes inflammation and thus it results in endothelial dysfunction and atherosclerosis. Intake of long chain saturated fatty acids will induce pro-inflammatory responses and impacts growth and viability of endothelial cells. Now let's see how atherosclerosis can be prevented by dietary and lifestyle modification. The dietary cholesterol intake should be limited. It should be less than 200 mg per day. There should be more intake of vegetable oils and polyunsaturated fatty acids like omega-3 fatty acids. The saturated fatty acid intake should be lowered. Overall fat intake should be restricted. It should not be more than 20% of total calorie intake. Trans fatty acid should be avoided. There should be more intake of green leafy vegetables and fiber in the diet. 20 to 30 gram per day. Sucrose should be avoided. Cigarette smoking should be avoided. And there should be more antioxidants, vitamin C, E and beta carotene. Exercise should be done because it increases the HDL cholesterol level. Which are the various hypolipidemic drugs which decreases the cholesterol level? First is HMG coa reductase inhibitors like statin, for example, aterostatin, simvastatin, bile acid binding resins like cholestyramine, cholestipol, probucol, which increases LDL catabolism and decreases the cholesterol concentration. Nicotinic acid inhibits lipolysis and decreases VLDL level. Ezetimibe inhibits absorption of cholesterol from mixed micelle. Aspirin prevents thrombus formation. It has antiplatelet activity and vitamin E is antioxidant. The next video will be on lipid profile.